Hello, we are Liz and Jamie. And we live on a boat with a cat. In the last episode, we were frolicking on Koh Ha, one of our favourite anchorages to date. Surrounded by pristine nature both above and below the sea, Jamie and American went for a dive around the coral. Meanwhile, on the beach that only reveals itself at spring low water, Alicia and I put the world to rights. We ended with Alicia going off her food. Here's what happened next. smell that much. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it looks like a grouper. Yeah. yeah. Thing. Is it dead or not? Dead. It's oh. not dead. Oh my god. Oh my god. I think it's oh dead. He had his death row. Uh, How do you know he's not dead? Oh, yeah. This one, none of my fish, we're going to have to fillet him. Oh, cook him whole. Wow. Look at him. Well, I'm taking up spear fishing. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was not fair. <laughs> it isn't. So how do we kill him? It seems that American has been busy catching our dinner, a tasty looking grouper. There are many ways to kill a fish, from cutting its gills to severing its head. Some yachts swear by pouring alcohol into its gills, but we think this is a waste of rum. The best way to humanely kill a large fish like this is to hit it squarely between the eyes or drive a knife through its brain. Well, I'm cutting out his, his lungs yeah. while we speak, so... Alicia, you're looking forward to dinner? <laughs> She's not going to eat it now. She's going to be a veggie. <laughs> she, said, she said she was going to witness this... Uh... Eventually, the grouper is gutted and we slice it up into large fillets, which we then barbie that evening along with some bream which I caught over the side of Esper. Next morning, it's time to say goodbye to American and Alicia as they make their way back to Krabi and we move on towards Tatoon, where we're aiming to haul out and repair the damage caused by the accident. Before we set off, Jamie catches up with American aboard Synchronicity. American, can you just uh, tell us a bit about uh, how we came to end up sitting in your cockpit of sailing yacht Synchronicity here in Thailand? So I been dreaming of sailing for many years and then I finally bought my own boat here in Thailand uh, near Phuket and over the years I'm watching a lot of different YouTube channels that are about sailing so Delos is one of the ones that I think a lot of people know about uh, and I had kind of consumed all that was out there and then one day I stumbled upon follow the boat and you were you were in the boatyard in Satoon uh, refitting Esper and so I started to consume these videos almost like a junkie uh, every night, one or two of them, as I was preparing dinner. And, uh, and then at the same time that I was almost finishing those up, you launched your Patreon uh, account. And so I found that immediately and signed up and uh, began to support you. Yeah, we thank you for that. Can you just uh, tell the people watching who don't know Patreon, what, what's Patreon all about? Well, it's actually a really cool system that allows YouTube content creators to monetize their efforts and for the people who are watching this, this content and who really appreciate it to show their support for that content directly by sending a contribution. Uh, and so you're able to set a contribution level every time a Patreon exclusive video is published by the content creators and you can also set a monthly limit. So if you feel like, hey, every time these guys put up a video, I'd like to give them $5, uh, but I don't want to spend more than $10 per month overall you can set that up and so it's just a really nice way of bringing content viewers and the content creators together uh, in a way that goes a lot further than just YouTube by itself can do. So what is it about uh, the sailing videos that you like? 
Well, for me, it's it's an escape. Uh, partly, even when you're doing something which is difficult, like refitting your boat, you know, on the hard in Thailand. Uh, for me to be able to watch that and to see the lessons that you're learning, and I'm taking a lot of information from it. Right, I'm taking a lot also of information about how you. Uh, and Liz handle various situations that you keep your cool uh, and that you're very respectful to the people that you're working with and all that's really important you know it's a, lot, a large part of what makes being on a boat or working on a boat enjoyable is the attitude that you bring to it so um, these videos have just been incredibly educational but also really highly entertaining as well because you have a vested interest in this because uh, recently you've been getting into sailing yourself, haven't you? Can you Absolutely. tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so I mean that's one of the reasons I, I really enjoy watching it so much because you guys can have some pretty serious uh, trouble thrown at you and you, you know, watching you handle it um, gives me faith that I can also survive these kinds of trials. And so, yeah, from my own boat, since I purchased it, uh, fortunately, knock on wood, there haven't been a huge number of issues, but there's always some little nagging mechanical thing here and there, or something that needs to be learned about how to handle the boat in certain situations. And so having access to what you guys do, the content that you create, makes that really fun and easy to, uh, to get a hold of. Okay, so you're in Shanghai. I can't imagine there's too much sailing there. Is there a sailing scene there? There, there is a little, so uh, it's really started to take off since the Chinese economy began to take off that people are interested in sailing, um, but there's not ocean sailing there. It's all on lakes uh, around Shanghai. So we do dinghy sailing and we have, you know, cats and trimarans and sailing dinghies. And uh, so you can get out and sail, but um, it's very, very different from what we experience when we come here to sail on the ocean around Thailand. So you come here often? Well, I try to come over every two months uh, if possible. I'm fortunate that my work offers a lot of time flexibility. And so since I bought the boat, it's been regularly about every two months and I'll come out for anywhere from five to 10 days on each trip. And uh, the worst part about that is, is just going back home because once you've been out for five or six days, you get into a rhythm of it, you really start to relax into the feeling of it. And uh, that's right when you wish that you could just keep going and not go back. All right, guys. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Yes, be well. We left Koh Ha and made our way south. With no wind and flat seas, we had to motor. Along the way, we noticed many logs in the sea, which we put down to the spring high water, sweeping the beaches of broken trees and palms and carrying them back into the waves. We make our way to Koh Rock, a convenient stop familiar to those who follow the boat. If you remember, we like to take a mooring buoy at this spot. With the bow secured to the mooring buoy, it doesn't take long for me to get the fishing rod out in no time, Millie and I have caught a bucket full of bream. What a well-trained cat. Oh yes, look at that. Those are nasty, those spikes. One just got me. One of the great things about this lifestyle is having the time to cook. Jamie and I share the cooking duties equally. We both love spending time in the galley, experimenting with new and interesting dishes, though it can get a bit hot down there at times. So, Jamie, we've got four bream. What are we going to do with them? We are going to try something a little bit different and have a fish broth, I suppose. We're going to cook them on the barbie first anyway, like we normally do, which is wrapped in foil with some lemon and herbs and a bit of garlic and 
some oil, but half cook them on the barbie, and then meanwhile we're going to cook up a little broth with some vegetable stock and some potatoes. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple because in my opinion sea bream is one of the tastiest fish. I think it's actually tastier than snapper and grouper. There we go, I said it. Sea bream is tastier than snapper and grouper. So um, yeah, I thought we'd try this. And I've been using American's knife that he gave us when we first met him. This thing can cut diamonds. It is so sharp, it's unbelievable. So yeah, fry up some onions and garlic and make the broth and uh, I guess someone's got to gut the fish. Who's that going to be? It's probably you. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Well done. Yeah. Well. I caught them for you though. Yeah. Well done. And we got an extra one from Millie. Yeah. That's a very nice supper you've got there, Moo, isn't it? You gonna tuck in? Here's your dinner table. Here we are. You'll take the sharp bits off? Probably. We'll take the sharp bits off, Mary. I'm gonna put all the bits in here. Millie, meanwhile, waits patiently for her dinner. You'll notice I use a pair of pliers when handling bream. I've been caught up by their sharp spines a few times and it can be painful. Although Millie's tummy can digest thick bone, I like to cut the spines off for her. You've not done this before. I have, but I just don't want to... I have been stabbed by these things so often I just don't want to get stabbed any more. Fed up with it. Millie, do you want your dinner? Millie, look, fish. Look, Millie, Mill. fish. Look, look, Millie. Look, there you are. There you are. So what, uh, the, what stage are we at now then? Okay, so you very kindly beheaded the fish for me and cut off the, uh, the fitting bit. So I'm just uh, gutting these now. And um, give them a quick rinse, but we're basically going to put them on the barbie. Uh, just like this, wrapped in some foil. Maybe with a bit of oil just so that the flesh cooks properly and um, then we'll add to the broth. The broth, by the way, I secretly added some lentils. I know you said don't, but I did, just to help thicken it up a little bit. So I'm sure it's going to be delicious. Yeah. Well, do you remember last time when we stupidly tried to fillet the bream? It was just a dumb idea because they're too small to fill it. So we're just gutting them and splitting them down the middle. And uh, there we go, like that. You can see it's uh, quite a bit of meat in there. Have a look. Mm, lovely. Delicious. I love bream. Yeah, this, I was saying earlier about bream versus grouper and snapper. And for me, it's the uh, it's a texture. Something about the bream 
texture which is, um, I don't know how to describe it really, it's, it's quite fleshy isn't it? It's, yeah, it I is. think with uh, Grouper and Snapper it, I, I find it a bit more fluffy and a bit tougher and uh, I think it's definitely tougher. Where the bream uh, has got an almost earthy taste to it, which I really like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you remember when we were in Turkey, bream was um, it was the fish to go for, wasn't it? it always, yeah. You see, you had bass and bream on the menu, but bream was always more expensive, but uh, extremely tasty. And I just love the way it just falls off the bone, which is what we hope to do after taking it off the barbie to put it in the broth. Are you a bit hot then? Uh, just <laughs> a little, yeah. Okay, so in our galley we have three taps. We have the main uh, freshwater tap, which comes from our tanks. And this is uh, driven um, by, a, by a bladder, I suppose, which is run off 12 volts. If that breaks down, we have an override thing here, which also pumps fresh water from our tanks. The third one, however, is salt water, and this comes straight from outside. So with things like fish and uh, cleaning up in the bowl, you have this limitless supply of fish, uh, fish, no, I wish we did, mm -hmm. of water, um, salt water, which just allows me to, to clean these out without wasting any of the fresh water. So I'll give these a, a bit of a rinse with the salt water and then a, a quick blast with the fresh water before... Um, Put them in the file and file them on the barbie. So normally when I do this I add lemon, parsley, maybe some garlic, ginger and cook it, cook the whole thing on the barbie as it is. So what are we doing this time? We're not doing that, we're just cooking the fish in a little bit of oil, is that right? Yeah, because um, it's, it's all going to go in the, in the broth eventually, so literally just a bit of oil and um, Wrap it around and then wrap them up in the foil. Shiny side inside, remember, keep the heat in. And um, make little parcels of them. Little parcels. I don't think we sh we need to add lemon juice now. If we could add some lemon juice to the, uh, the broth, I suppose, but. I don't think we need to because we haven't got many lemons and we do need them for very important things like gin and tonic. And. <sighs> yeah, there's just one problem with that. Yeah. We haven't got any more tonic. Oh no. Yeah. I think there are a couple in the fridge in fact, that you don't we, know about. Yeah. Well, I think we've almost run out of everything, haven't we? Yeah. So literally just parcels, chuck them on the barbie, in they go. Okay, let's see them on the barbie. You just mentioned the barbie, there's just one problem with the barbie, of course. We've only got one gas supply, and so the gas is currently connected to the hob, which is behind me. So uh, we've got to try and work out some kind of balance where we cook this up and then leave it to stew, I suppose, disconnect the gas outside, connect it to the barbie, cook these, take them off, reconnect the gas to the hob and um, carry on cooking. Right, disconnect this now because the pressure cooker is up to speed and it can just carry on cooking while we do the barbie. Yeah, I might need to get outside because I am dripping yep, rivers of sweat. It's too hot It's so hot down it's here. Yeah. so hot. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. I'm going to get out of the kitchen. Right, let's go. off. Oh, that looks good. And look at this. And that whole fillet. It's cooked actually, isn't it? It is, it's completely cooked. So it just goes in at the very last minute. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I don't know how our um, our oh, broth is done. I've just changed the gas back, so I'll check on that. But yeah, this, I mean, you could eat this now. Yeah. And I'm actually tempted <gasps> to, so look at that. Oh, it looks so good. Just Maybe what we should do is just um, finish the broth off, leave the fish aside, and just put it in the bowls once we've got the broth in there. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad idea. I, I 
I'd like to put it in, I was, what I was going to do is just cut it up a little and just, just so it sits in the broth just for a few minutes to soak up some of the flavours in there. Mm. Alright, you're the chef. I am the chef. This <laughs> is, I am the chef. You're the catcher of the fish and I am the chef. Oh, I love this. Ooh, salivating. Fish stew stroke um, soup a la esper. Let's do it. There we go. Simple. Hopefully very tasty. So we've had the catching of the fish, the cooking of the fish, and now it's the eating of the fish. Mm. Good? Mm-hmm. Liz, we've had our fill of fish. We have, and it's been great. What's the time now? I think it's about half past nine. In the evening, of course. In the evening, yes. And what's our thinking? Well, we've got to get back to Satoon now to get the boat sorted out, and we've also got to get videos done, and we need a bit of internet connection, and we've just been talking through one step, 25 nautical miles and another step, another 30 nautical miles, which would take us through to Friday afternoon. But if we leave now, we can go through a, an incredibly flat sea with a very strong full moon. Visibility is great at the moment. Not many fishing boats out at this time of the month. Why is that? Um, it's full moon. What does that mean? They don't like to fish on a full moon. The fish don't like it. Look, I mean, it's hardly anyone out there. But whatever, there's always fishing boats, but, but, but they're very visible. So what we're thinking is we might leave now, put the coffee on, get some caffeine racing through our veins, and do a bit of night sailing, night motoring. What do you think? Yeah, I, th I actually think it's quite a good idea because, as you say, the first stop was a place called Petra. Fetra, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's 20 miles away, and, that, and and to go there we'd lose it another day. Because what happens is you you get up, you sort the stuff out, you sort the boat out, you go, you get there, you're knackered because you're always knackered, even if it's just 20 miles and you're just motoring, uh, and you don't really feel like doing very much at the end. So we may as well just motor right through to Taratau, which is opposite where we want to end up in Satoon in the boatyard. Uh, and be there tomorrow afternoon, sleep, just take it easy tomorrow afternoon, and that gives us all of Friday, all of Saturday, and go into Satoon on Sunday. And can you explain the context of why we're thinking about this? Because it's all about um, you going back to the UK and visas. And yeah. I've got to go back to the UK uh, because of uh, an elderly mum that needs a bit of looking after for a bit, so I'm going back on the 12th. We've got visas that run out on the 17th, which are extendable, the 17th of July, which are extendable for another month. So we can get everything done in Satoon. I can go, you can go back to Phuket and to the area that we want to put the boat. Um, and we just need to crack on, really. We just need to get it done. You know the lighting makes you look like a scary monster. <laughs> I am a scary monster. <laughs> Smile for the camera. In the next episode we haul out at PSS Shipyard where we refitted the boat last year. We meet some familiar faces and crack on with repairing the damages caused during the recent collision. Welcome to Thailand. Follow the boat. <laughs> Thank you.